Let's give our confession of faith. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. How should we greet each other today? Let us pray for the one nation we picked. When it comes to our church, from our elders to our all the children of our church, we've all picked one country with our own hands from the continents. But if you picked a country and just threw the ballot into the trash, then whatever you do, you won't receive answers. To have picked that country is not a coincidence, but it is the great kindness of the Holy Spirit. And therefore, you must pray for that country that you've picked. Say, Amen. 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 You have to pray. If you've prayed so far, then raise your hand. I've picked the country and I've prayed so far. Then you should raise your hands. Let me see those hands once again. I see that half of you are just staying still. For those who haven't picked a country yet, our administrative office and our newcomers department, you have to have them have the newcomers pick a country from the two to seven nations so that the first time they even if it's the first time they come they should start praying for one country the moment they they register for our for our church they should start praying for one country that they have picked all of you must embrace one country in your hearts and pray for the country whether you go or not it does not matter whether you preach the gospel there or not, if you pray for that nation, you are already in the line of world evangelization. What is God's interest? It is world evangelization. And therefore, our missionaries are, are the pastor of pastors. And so if you're a pastor and you went as missionaries, then you are a pastor of pastors. To be at, in a field where God has prepared, to be able to share the gospel there and to share this eternal gospel to be able to enjoy that privilege is such a tremendous blessing for all of you. Many of our believers and church members, they're always, they stumble with their own problems. Do not live a life like unbelievers, but may you completely live your life, whether you drink or eat, whatever you do, for the sake of saving souls and for the kingdom of God. With this, today's message is entitled, The 237 Missions the Lord Works With. Today is dedicated as Yewon Mission Sunday, a time to glorify God through missions. Last week, the 2024 World Missions Convention, with the theme, The Watchman with the Partisan, was held at Tokpyeong RUTC. Commissioned and joint missionaries from around the world, from 95 countries around the world came and m almost 400 missionaries and all, all together about 850 missionaries and also local uh, members and pastors also attended, about 2,000 of them. And so the missions convention was held until yesterday. All our commissioned and joined missionaries from around the world gathered together to gain new strength for the evangelization of 237 nations and 5,000 tribes within the flow of the word. How will you receive the strength to do world evangelization, especially our missionaries to from Pakistan and many are of our missionaries overseas? I'm sure that the messages were a bit hard when they kept saying 777. What is the 777? And when they talk about the three concentrations, three settings, what are those? These terminologies may feel uh, strange and new to you and you may not understand it but we will interpret all of that content in your language and give it to you and tomorrow because we've been doing the evangelism movement for 30 years there are many terminologies but if you don't understand these terminologies then you, it'll, you'll have a difficult time understanding what we're saying and 90% of the people who attended said, oh, you know, the atmosphere is nice. We're just attending a missions convention. But it's, it would be difficult to accept the word as your rema, as your own word, because you don't understand deeply. Because Satan 
disturbs you from understanding the word. There are people even who've listened to the word for 30 years and yet they have not realized there are many pastors like that. That is how difficult a spiritual message is. It's quite, it's very simple, but it's also very difficult. Why is it difficult? Because you have your own motives in you because of the things that are yours in you. That's why the, the word does not enter you. And that is why even if you seem like you understand, you actually don't understand. And even if you know there are no fruits. And there needs to be a system for the word to be fulfilled, but many churches have no system, and that's why people just leave it at hearing. And that's why later on they say other things. Therefore, the spiritual world, the spiritual realm, makes it very easy to receive salvation, but receiving the guidance of the Holy Spirit is quite difficult. The Lord must be with us to do missions. If the Lord is not with us, then the works cannot take place. And that is why Paul and the early church members, they fasted to receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit so that they may fast and receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And that is why whenever they went to, mi to missions, they fasted. Why did they fast? Was it to just starve themselves out? No, it's because they were earnest to receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And what is the walk of faith? It is receiving the guidance of the Holy Spirit. What is the opposite of the guidance of the Holy Spirit? It's the guidance of the devil. You receive one or the other. There's no in-between. It's either you receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit or you receive the guidance of evil spirits. But surprisingly, most receive the guidance of demons. Even if they're seated at church, they need to receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit. But in order to receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit, you must not have anything of your own. You must not have your own greed or motives. You should not have any thought of your own so that you can follow. <coughs> and so even when it comes to the church, Everyone has the time schedule to go with them. But then if you want to go together, you at times you must have to give up certain things. But if you don't give up, you can't go together. The World Missions Convention took place this way. And today's second worship service was dedicated as a United Missions Festival Lord's Day. And today at 2.30 p.m., the Yewon Missions Festival will take place. After lunch, you must come back here, okay? There, because we will have a missions festival today. All our commissioned and cooperative missionaries of Yewon will attend. Also, Pastor Amjad, the senior pastor of Gujranwala Yewon Church, which was established through the previous Pakistan evangelism camp, and Pastors Wilson, Shabazz, and Dan Danish will be appointed as commissioned and cooperative missionaries. And there are various performances prepared by each department so through this time it will be a time for all young believers to become oneness and participate in missions this way and that is why i hope that all our missionaries here and all believers may be it may have the time to embrace missions in your hearts right after the covid 19 pandemic on-site missions have resumed, but Korean churches find themselves in a different situation from the past. Over the last 30 years, Korean churches have been experiencing stagnation or decrease, which has direct, directly impacted missions as well. However, despite this, even up until just 10 years ago, there was once a passion for missions amongst Korean churches that they had slogans that said, let's send 100,000 missionaries by 2030. So they had this type of passion for missions. But after and during the COVID-19 pandemic, and because now we are at it, facing an age where we have a decrease in demographics and population. Korea has become a nation that has the lowest birth rates and our population only keeps decreasing. And because of the COVID-19 pandemic and the decrease of population, this slogan can't be heard anymore. The passion and vision for missions has completely vanished. Nevertheless, even amid these unfortunate circumstances in this age, our Yewon Church is officially heading on a challenge of missions towards the evangelization of 237 nations and 5,000 tribes following the consecration of our church sanctuary. 
God says you shall possess all nations. God said that he will allow it so that we may receive all nations. And God says enlarge the tent of your 237 missions. Holding on to the word, we are going towards the 237 fields that God opens for us. The environment of the world does not matter regardless of what the world circumstances may be, regardless of what your level, your standards may be. The 237 missions is the last eternal mission that the Lord has given to us after His resurrection and before His ascension. This is the last mission. Today's passage emphasizes while the Lord worked with them. This is very important. The Lord works with us. We're not doing this alone. Missions is not something that we do alone. It's not about my family, but it is that the Lord is working with my family. This is what you must see. This is what you must be able to do. That is only when we can carry out the 237 missions. When the Lord works with us and the Lord is with me, what is it that we cannot do? The Lord is with us. In fact, it was not our plan from the very beginning to go into Pakistan. It was not like we planned it beforehand. But when the time schedule came, God opened the doors for us. That is why we entered that field. Even before that, they, the missions were taking place in America already. But after our church went in, but they just, after yeah, when church entered that field, the field in America kind of entrusted us to us. And that's why Missionary Chung, sometimes people criticize him because other churches were already doing missions. But when Yewon Church goes in, you know, we kind of take charge of everything. And that's why he received a lot of criticism. But even that is God's work. We're not doing anything. It's just that God opens the doors for us and we go in. God's plan to use our church for Islamic evangelism has officially begin with, begun with Pakistan. Now, the doors to the field in India are also opening. Our missionary Zhang is again opening doors there as well. And as I mentioned last time, the door to the field of Mexico is also opening. What must we do? We only need to go to wherever doors are opening. If God tells us to do something, then all we need to do is do it. There's no need to plan and do something else or to even bear any ambition. We simply need to go wherever God opens doors for us. Why? Because God is leading us from the front line. He guides us. And that is why God, God has sent Yewon Church that we may be able to support these missionaries well. All we need to do is follow with thanksgiving and joy. In our church, the continental and national system for the 237 nations are, are already in place. So all we need to do is expand the tent of the 237 missions. And that is why each and every single church member of our church must embrace a nation and pray for the nation. And doing so is already doing world evangelization. Even if you've never gone to that nation, through casting lots, God has given you to that nation for you to embrace. All you need to do is pray for that country. And all, all you did was pray for the country, and yet you received the reward for world evangelization. But if you don't pray, then you have nothing to do with God. God has sent you to Yewon Church to do two to seven missions and has allowed you to cast a lot and pick a country, but you're uninterested in that, then God, of course, will be not interested in you as well. Of course, you receive salvation, but as you live your life here, I'm sure it will not be that fun. There will not be that much joy. There will not be much vision in your life. I'm sure you'll probably suffer like people in the world does. So you must know God's system and know God's sign. Oh, God is allowing me to hold on to this country. I must pray for this country. And that is why in our bulletin, there are testimonies of individuals who have been praying for the country that they picked. Like today's message. May all of you be used in the 237 missions that the Lord works with and become disciples of Christ. And because... 
crisis in you, may you become a partisan and become a watchman who has a partisan and save your field as main figures. Point number one, the spiritual platform of 237 missions. The words of Mark 16 begin with the message of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. After speaking to his disciples about his resurrection several times, Jesus rose from the dead three days after his death according to his word. In 1 Corinthians 15 verses 14, the Apostle Paul emphasizes the importance of the resurrection. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. Simply put, without the resurrection, the gospel would not exist. The Bible describes the ransom and the resurrection of Jesus Christ like two sides of a coin. In other words, it, they are imperative factors that make the gospel truly the gospel. The crucifixion and resurrection, they follow each other. Why are these two things absolutely necessary? Why is it necessary? Because through the sin of the first man, Adam, all mankind became sinners. All mankind are sinners. They're born as sinners. And that's why they are born crying. We are born as sinners. We are born with this original sin. And if you have sin, the Bible says that we must, that there are wages of sin. And Romans 3.23 says, all have sinned and they have fallen short of the glory of God so all mankind are sinners that's what is it is declared in Romans 6 23 it says the wages of sin is death the wages of sin is death it says however to save the sinner God had a way and that's Hebrews 9 22 and without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness of sins so how can you solve the problem of sin you must shed blood in the Old Testament the priest had to slaughter an animal and spread the blood and scare the blood to receive the forgiveness of sins but after the New Testament, we are atoned for our sins by believing in Jesus Christ who shed his blood on the cross for us. And that's why you must, one had to shed blood in order to save the sins of humanity. And therefore, to atone for the sins of humanity, Jesus personally became the sacrifice. He became the sacrificial offering on the cross and died for us. He bore, he he bared all the, the sins that we must have that we must have taken upon ourselves. However, if it had ended here, it would have been recorded as a moving event in the world. Why? Because there are others in the world who can die for others also. However, Jesus, as prophesied in the scriptures, conquered the power of death and he rose again from the dead. He resurrected. So all the problems of mankind were completely solved. And as evidence of that, he resurrected. He overcame and defeated the power of death. What is this? This is why the, why the gospel cannot be the same with, with other religions. Because no other religion has salvation. It is a fundamental difference. The Lord is still alive today and he is working with us even now. And that is why we who are so lacking, we who are nothing, we who are insignificant are able to speak about evangelizing the 237 nations. If we're able to do it, then we wouldn't need the Lord. However, but because we cannot do it, the Lord works with us. And that is why we pray. And that is why we receive the help of the Holy Spirit. And so the, a lively faith in the resurrection Living out and experiencing the gospel of the cross and resurrection truly means living a walk of faith. And that's why you pray, Jesus Christ, by the blood of the cross, may you forgive all my sins. And he, when we believe it and we confess it, he forgives everything. And you're cleansed of your sins and you are able to worship before God. And that is why we must enjoy the thanksgiving and the gratitude for the salvation that we received every day. The salvation. And you must, you must also restore your faith as a lively faith in the resurrection. And that becomes a spiritual platform for us to actualize the 237 missions given to us. 
the power of resurrection, the thanksgiving for the resurrection, and the faith in the resurrection. Without that, you cannot do missions because the power of resurrection becomes the power for missions. And that is why we're able to boldly do missions. Eternal life is here. If you hear my word and listen and believe, you will receive eternal life. That is what missionaries have to proclaim in the field. And that's why missionaries have so much power. And that's why missionaries need to receive the filling of the Holy Spirit. And that is why the missionaries must have authority. Unfortunately, in today's passage, we see disciples who did not believe in the resurrection of Jesus. Verse 14. Afterward, he appeared to the eleven themselves as they were reclining at table, and he rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they had not believed those who saw him after he had risen. Even though Jesus talked about the resurrection, Even though people said, oh, Jesus had risen. They did not believe. They said, oh, that's impossible. They, their hearts had hardened. Those whose hearts are hardened do not believe. What does that mean? It means that they are arrogant. Their hearts are arrogant. To be arrogant, in other words, can also mean that they have too much greed in the world. It's filled with the things of the world, with worries and concerns and ambitions of the world. And that's why they cannot believe. Even though Jesus talked about the resurrection many times before he was crucified on the cross, the disciples let it go in and out the other year. Thus, they did not believe in Jesus' resurrection even after hearing the news of the resurrection. I'm sure you've heard of the expression, author's lecture. When famous academy instruct, instruct, instructors in Gangnam write and publish their own books and lecture with them, And they, they, and that is called the author's lecture because they have authored their own book and lecture with them. And because they're lecturing based on the books that they have authored, students flock because they think that it would be the most effective lecture. Because the, the lecturers are lecturing based on their own book. However, regardless of whether it is an author's lecture, if the students cannot absorb the contents of the lecture as their own, skills will not improve. Even if the authors, even if the lecturers are lecturing based on their own book, if the students cannot observe the contents, then what point is that? From a spiritual point of view, the disciples of Jesus received this author's lecture. How easily did Jesus teach by using analogies with the lives and natural environment of Jewish practices for the disciples so that they may understand easily. He not only gave the disciples knowledge, but also gave them experiences in their daily life. And it did not end with one, but he, Jesus taught them repeatedly for three years. He slept with them, he ate with them for many, for many years that way. But the situation was like pouring water into a bottomless jar. No matter how much he poured in, it all just seeped out somewhere. Even in our walk of faith, how many years you have been attending church, that is not important. What is important is how much the gospel message is imprinted in your soul. How much How much is the word imprinted in you and how much do you hold on to the pulpit message as your own? And the characteristic of that, even if people have not gone to church for many years yet, the word has already been imprinted in them. There are many, and they are able to preach the word very well. There are many deacons and others like that. They're very good at giving the message and praying, even if they haven't gone to church that long. for many years but there are also those who have gone to church for many many years and yet they don't even know how to s preach the word why because they don't have anything that's their own they have no experiences they have never experienced the fulfillment of the word because if you've experienced the fulfillment of the word then you cannot stay still and so and when they prayed and they held on to the word then that word was fulfilled if you become a witness to that then you can't just stay still and that's the people who don't have that type of experience They feel burdened to pray, and missions have nothing to do with them. 
because they have never experienced it themselves, even if they've gone to church for many years. Are you able to hold on to the message as your own or not? Father God, may you allow me to hold on to this word as my own, as Rema today. It must be imprinted and become your root. It needs to be rooted in you, and it has to become your nature. If you look at today's passage, when Jesus rebuked the disciples, it stated that the disciples' hearts were hardened. What does it mean for their hearts to have been hardened? It means that there were stereotypes, prejudice, and fixed ideas in their hearts. They had prejudice, and they had their own judgments and fixed ideas. Spiritual growth starts with putting down the hardness of your heart, your stereotypes, your prejudice, your fixed ideas. When you put that down, that is when spiritual growth begins. The writer of Psalm confessed this in Psalms 119.92, If your law had not been my delight, I would have perished in my affliction. The word of the Lord needs to become my delight. When you listen to the word of God, because it's moving and active in your life, it needs to be so so. Uh, it needs to become your delight and it needs to become your joy. But without that, the writer of Psalms says he would not have been able to overcome their affliction. If you are in difficulty, may you hold on to the word. May, you, may the word become your comfort and your enjoyment. May the word of God be sweeter and be more uh, strength to you than any other words. Whether the word of God is your delight is important. The word of God needs to become your delight then you'll be able to overcome whatever affliction or hardships that come your way. There's no one that does not have any conflict. There's no one that doesn't have any worries. And so everyone has some type of worries and concerns. Everyone has problems. But why is it that some people live like they have no problems? It's because they are able to overcome them. Because they have overcome their, the problems of their meetings and overcome what other people say. Amen? That's our privilege. That's the privilege of a child of God. And it goes the same for 237 missions. We must use the power of resurrection, the eternal life. And when the pulpit message is alive and working in my life, then this eternal mission of 237 missions become mine and you start to gain the strength to carry out to their seven missions. Missionaries must have power. If you don't have any power, how is that you can convince others? If you're not happy and if you're not moved by salvation, and if you're unable to enjoy this, then how is it that you'll be able to share this with others? If you are stumbling because of this and those events, then how will you share the gospel to others? You can't. That's why you have no evidence. Those who have a resurrection faith, those who have a thanksgiving and gratitude for this eternal life, those who have the Son, those who have the life, they cannot stay still. They can never remain in one place. Instead, the Lord will perform lively dynamics like eagles soaring up on their wings. All believers of Yewon and all commissioned and cooperative missionaries of Yewon, I bless you in the name of the Lord that you may be empowered by the power of the resurrection and the blessing of the throne that allows you to become 24 hours with the pulpit message and may you have the evidence of establishing the absolute presence of Christ in all your fields. Point number two, the works experience when action is taken. Verse 15 reads, And he said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. We see that Jesus rebuked his disciples for their lack of faith and hardness of heart. But the, he did that to let them restore the faith of the resurrection. So that Jesus could give them the eternal mission of 237 missions. But they need to have the confirmation of missions to be able to go forth. And so Jesus rebuked them so that they may restore their faith in the resurrection. 
Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. This is the great commission of Jesus. This is not a mission that's only given to his disciples, but it is to all believers who believe in the ransom of the cross and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is our calling mission and heavenly mandate. Why does the church exist? Why did the Lord establish the church? What is the mission the church must carry out? Should we just fight for our positions in the church so that we may be able to put forward our names? Is the place to bring out your ego and pride? The church is a place that saves lives. It is an ark of salvation. If you come in here, you are saved. And that's why overseas, it is missions. Without that, there is no reason for the church to exist. Furthermore, when it comes to Yaman Church, when I first pioneered my, my, pioneered my church, I asked God, God, I have never done any pastoral ministry. How am I supposed to pioneer my church? But the answer that God gave me was missions. If you look at today's passage, it shows Jesus saying that he will be with those who proclaim the gospel with great power. Verses 17 to 18 read, And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak out in new tongues. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. Have you ever cast out demons in the name of Jesus Christ? I'm sure many missionaries have done this before because it's a mission field. To cast out demons in the name of Jesus Christ? I was born in a Christian family. I was, I was raised in a very conservative Haptong denomination. And Goshen Haptong denomination does not acknowledge these things. The Koshin Haptong denomination do not acknowledge the works of the Holy Spirit. They don't acknowledge that, and that's why things are not working out for them. They don't acknowledge the, the entity of the Holy Spirit. And many Westminster Seminary alumni are professors of Koshin Haptong Seminary. And so what they say is that the Holy Spirit only came at, during the time of the New Testament, and that's why people were able to speak tongues, speak in tongues at that time, but it doesn't work out anymore. And then another denomination says, no, the Holy Spirit continue, it didn't, the Holy Spirit does not work then, only then, but the Holy Spirit continuously works now. We must believe in the continuation of the works of the Holy Spirit, and we must continuously rely on the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we must ask before the Lord. And it is that church where works takes place. Many current churches don't talk about demons. And if you talk about demons, people say that that church is strange. There are demons. And we see shamans returning to the Lord. And we see shamans receiving the salvation and being freed and coming back to the Lord. And yet, many current churches will not talk about demons. But that is the evidence, very evidence that they are seized by demons because demons are working. And even Jesus casted out demons. We must look at the Bible. Jesus cast out demons. And so even when I first pioneered my church, I cast out many demons as well. I didn't know what that was. But even as a believer, even after, even being born in a Christian family, I still didn't know this. But then whenever I looked at the Bible, because I didn't know, the Bible showed how Jesus cast out demons. And even when I said, in the name of Jesus, leave this person, I didn't really believe because I've never seen it. But then they, the demons would be cast out because the name of Jesus Christ has power. It's not because you prepared many things. It's because of that name of Jesus Christ, because that name has power. And that's why even if you haven't if you don't have any power, you must pray in the name of Jesus Christ and cast out demons in the name of Jesus Christ. I was surprised too. I'm sure you will be shocked then too. And so I still remember when I laid hands on an unbeliever and they were healed. I was shocked at then. But you, many of you, do not know who you are. Tremendous power and authority have been given to you and yet you don't use it because you don't believe it. And so many kinds of these works happened. 
because God gave this power and authority to those who believe in Jesus it's not just the pastors but even laymen the moment you believe in Jesus Christ this identity this authority and power is given to you and spiritual gifts and all of these things it all took place when I first pioneered the church the casting of, out of demons and the healing of sicknesses these things are even more prevalent in the mission field why because this is effective for the sake of spreading the gospel even Jesus he would heal a, a sickness and people would gather and he would preach the gospel that's what he did he would perform works so that people would gather and he would proclaim the gospel and that's why these works are more prevalent in the the mission field because it is effective and helpful for the spread of the gospel the work itself is not what gives salvation only the name of Jesus Christ can give salvation but because hearts are opened through these works these works take place first and then you preach the gospel so that they may accept Jesus Christ in their hearts in other words it becomes a door to effectively proclaim the gospel effectively that's what all healings are the, those are all instruments to proclaim the gospel Acts 28 the Apostle Paul was bitten by a poisonous snake on Malta Island and if you're bit by a venomous snake you need to die but Paul did not die and instead he performed various healings and so many people saw these miracles and the 276 people who were stranded on the island and the residents of the island too all of those individuals saw that God is alive and saw that Paul was a servant of the Lord and so through that the evangelization of Malta Island took place what we must know well is that God's signs and works are never given to make any individual stand out it is revealed for the living works of God and the spread of the gospel in the field where the gospel is spreading. In the past, there was a time when such faith and toast were prevalent in Korean churches. At that time, many people returned to the Lord. Many people returned to the Lord. And once when, when churches were staying still, there were revivalists and there were also pastors who would bring about great revival meetings and I was also influenced then as well and I experienced the Holy Spirit and there was a wind of the Holy Spirit that took place in Korea as well in the past and at that time revival leaders would gather and they would have revival conferences but later on revival leaders were focused on drawing attention to themselves and they become negligent in spreading the essential gospel and there were problems with materials and, and other conflicts and so all of that disappeared nothing was useful and beneficial to the spread of the gospel all they were consumed and engulfed in was about themselves about them being revealed we must not lose the essence of spiritual life the moment you lose hold of that that's the end of it the most important thing is to declare Jesus Christ directly with the power of the resurrection in the field when I was a pastor when I was a, when I when I was a deacon and an elder I would stand for three hours and I would praise the God I would praise and share the gospel and I would receive 5,000 business cards each day because people would accept that many people would accept each day 5,000 5, business cards a year and so I was crazy about evangelism from since when I was a young adult and when I was a deacon and I was a layman and an elder I was crazy about evangelism was it because my circumstances were so good? No, my one of my child has a disability. My business was not doing too well. There was nothing to be joyful about when you look at it from a physical perspective. I did not have any, not a single coin to spare for others. And I didn't have any leisure, but I was able to overcome all of that. I was able to overcome all of that. 
like a person who has millions and billions of dollars, like someone who received the greatest blessing. That's how I acted at that time. Don't put on a frown and walk around. But have this faith. Like you have everything. Verse 20. And they went out and preached everywhere while the Lord, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by accompanying signs. We can see that when the disciples to whom Jesus entrusted the eternal mission of saving lives went out to the field and spread the gospel, the Lord worked with them and testified the word being proclaimed. When we go to the field, it's not about our standards, our level, but the Holy Spirit works upon that field. Tomorrow, I'm giving a special lecture for commissioned and cooperative missionaries at a missions workshop. And the title of my special lecture is The Main Body of Missions. It is the body of missions. We must not be engulfed by the introductory things of the world. M most people are seized by the introductory things of the world. Instead, we must focus on the main body of missions, which is to make disciples. Unfortunately, fields that have no fruits in ministry are because they are engulfed by introductory things. And so they are deceived by their environments and their circumstances. They are wandering around in the introduction. And even when mission fields might look like they're doing well, at that point, they become divided and they have no disciples and so all they look at is money they don't even want Christ they all only want money and there are no absolute disciples of Christ but there are only children who don't know anything and so this makes me lament that is what the real self That is why the main missions that builds an unbreakable parts of Christ is so important. It is the same with our lives. The Tower of Babel that is self-centered, the material-centered life of Genesis 6. Many missionaries, they don't even talk about Christ. You know, they, they, they think about it, but they are so centered on materialistic things. And they're centered on worldly success. This is what unbelievers do. This life, eventually, is a tower of Babel. It is bound to crumble. It is bound to crumble. Therefore, we must carry out the mission of building a firm, absolute partisan of the three only. We must carry out the mission of making absolute disciples of Christ who hold on to the three only. And we must also carry out the mission of making local disciples. Local disciples. We must do the missions to raise local disciples. Especially remnants whom the gospel has become their nature from an early age where local pastors raise local remnants. This is what is real. The remnants in whom the gospel has already become their nature. And they become the main figures who can bring about new dynamics in the field. And that is why whether domestic or overseas, the ministry of the three courtyards is so important. May all members and all missionaries of Yewon Church position yourselves spiritually as the watchman with the bardison. Just like this year's World Missions Convention message. You already have the gospel. That is the partisan. You are the partisan. And then you go to the field and raise other partisans. A partisan establishes a partisan. In your business fields, in your ministry fields, raise up that partisan. And may you become a spiritual watchman who can give the accurate answer through this partisan. This is the conclusion. A new phrase for young people today is an armchair critic or and the armchair critic in other words in Korean is called yopo and yo, the word yopo actually derives from the general yopo in the Romans of three kingdoms and there was even a saying that said yopo is the best among generals and the red hair is the best among horses however General Yopo was so good at 
martial arts. He was the best, and he was the best general when it comes to martial arts. But this general, Yopo, would not go to the battlefield and be brave and perform his martial arts, but he would only stay in the corner of his room. Therefore, armchair critic. This terminology refers to people who cannot do anything outside. They can't do anything, but when they're in there sitting on the armchair in the corner of their room, they criticize others and do all these things. They are unable to go to the field. All they do is stay in their room. All they do is stay inside the church and only speak about negative things. They only say, oh, we can't do these things, that things don't work out, that they don't have enough time. They're always in the corner of their room. But when they actually go out, they have nothing to say. They can't even share the gospel. But all they do is stay around, lounge around their homes. What do we call that? We call indoor commanders. They're unable to go out. They can't go to evangelism camps. They can't do anything outside. They're only in the corner of their room. This is exactly what we must avoid in our spiritual life. In other words, it's a life that misses the field, the ones who don't go to the field. These individuals have no answers given by God. They only live by their own diligence. There is no special providence. As we welcome this Missions Lord's Day, we must recover our field from the field of my personal life and to the mission field, we must raise up partisans from my personal field to the mission field. We must raise partisans. Why? Because answers are in the field. I said this, but I was born in a believing family. I never missed an early morning prayer. But Poverty and sickness did not leave us. We went to church. We did not miss a single week of church. But when do when do poverty and sickness leave us? When does this curses and sins leave us? It is when we go out to the field and evangelize. And so go out with the young adults and go out to to, to the prisons, the jails, to the field, go out. And when you proclaim that, unbeknownst to yourself, God heals you both physically and spiritually. Do not become an armchair critic, but go out to the field. See what kind of works take place. And may you see the Lord who works with us and exert powerful influence let us pray Father God as we welcome this Yewon Missions Lord's Day may we experience the 237 mission fields that the Lord is where in which the Lord is with us and especially our missionaries who will be commissioned may they be empowered by new strength and may they have a new resolution and new strength to go and conquer their fields we pray this in Jesus Christ's name Amen